Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to finish this dress. A few weeks ago I started with the bodice. I'm gonna link the video up here in the eye so you can go ahead and watch that as a recap or you know if you haven't seen it go watch part one I guess before part two. And today we are going to finish this dress in adding the princess skirt of my dreams. I haven't started yet, so I am actually recording this before doing anything, so I literally have no idea what it's going to end up looking like. I have something made up in my mind. I think I will be doing three layers. Also, I think I will leave the dress as is. Uh, a lot of you guys actually said after seeing this constellation right here with the bodycon skirt. You know, do a detachable princess skirt with this constellation right here because then you might be able to w wear this on more occasions rather than having, you know, a big fluffy princess gown um, that you're probably never gonna wear if you're not gonna marry or something. I don't know. So <laughs> I thought that was a really, really great idea. So I'm actually going to make this a dress. So I'm gonna put uh, the waistline together and that's it. And then I'm gonna make a detachable skirt, a princess skirt, that's gonna be like very poofy, very A-line and dramatic. And it's gonna be, uh, you know, to be put on top of this. That brings me to how many layers I'm going to make. Obviously the uh, uh, skirt can only be worn more or less with this underneath. There is not really a need to make a lining per se because this already has a layer that's very comfortable um, on the leg so I don't really need to put anything underneath the dress itself for comfort. Now that doesn't eliminate the question of do I want it design wise, you know, like do I want a see through skirt? Because it's gonna be tall, this sequence tall, which is see through. Or do I want, um, you know, a non transparent skirt, uh, which then I will have to put lining underneath so that it's gonna be non transparent. Um, those are some things that I still have to figure out. But apart from that, I think I'm going to start draping the skirt. Yeah, let's do that. Hello, you're gonna help me? Yes. Okay, thanks for the help. I appreciate it. You like the dress? Huh? You like it? Yes? That's really nice of you that you like the dress. I hope that you're gonna like the outcome as well. So after I put my dress on my dress form, I actually decided against draping. I went ahead and made a half circle skirt on the computer and printed it out to, you know, make a whole pattern. The skirt itself was one meters and 10 centimeters long. This is the pattern piece right here. And it didn't really fit on my tool. As you can see right there, there was one corner. Uh, overlapping so I had to fold it the other way around you know normally you would fold it with the grain now I went ahead and actually folded the long sides together uh, four times so I was able to cut out the big circle skirt pattern which was one fourth of the whole thing the fabric that I'm using for this layer which is the lowest layer of the three is a very very stiff tool and I also decided to cut off about 20 centimeters off of the hem in order to make ruffles so that the puff of the underskirt is gonna be like even more. So what you can see on screen right here is actually just a skirt that is 90 centimeters long. So I cut out four times the 90 centimeter long half circle skirt and then I also cut out 20 centimeters or 30 centimeters I think I did wide panels. Not really a specific length, I just 
you know, <laughs> used some meters, I guess like around four to five meters, something like that, which I will be folding while sewing it onto the hem of the tall skirt. The next layer is my nude color tool, which I also used for my bodice. And I'm attaching the 20 centimeters back onto my pattern that I cut off for the rougher tool because this layer will be going from waist to hem all the way. So it's gonna cover the ruffles, which are just there to puff up the skirt a bit more. To summarize it all, I have one layer of stiffer tool, which has these 30 centimeters wide ruffles at the bottom. Then I have my nude colored circle skirt, which you can see me cut out right here, which measures one meters 10 from waist to hem. And then I have as my upper layer, my sequins fabric. Now, as you can see right here, my pattern is way too big and my sequins actually end right there. So what I had to do, and I already thought about this when I was making my pattern, that's why I have this line in the middle, I had to cut my pattern apart one time again. So this is only one eighth of my whole skirt. And obviously I had to cut this out double the amount, which in my case was eight times. Once I was done cutting out all of my layers, I put my skirts together. So I just sewed all the seams together and left about 20 centimeters in the center back open to attach a zipper in the end. And as you can see right here, I am putting the ruffles right onto the hem while folding and while sewing. So I didn't like pin anything or like measured anything really. I just like made these folds by eyeing it and sewed it onto my hem at the same time. Good morning, it's the next day. Um, I'm going to finish my skirt today and I had troubles yesterday figuring out how I would like to do this. Let me show you what my progress is. Yesterday, I actually went ahead and made all three of the skirts that I wanted to make for the project, which is the underskirt, the poofy part, basically. It's this very stiff tall that I made into um, a circle skirt up here and then just put ruffles on the hem to puff it up even more. And this is a very good base for the A-line skirt that I want. It also stands like this. As you can see here, it has a lot of structure. <laughs> and then as the bodice right here is lined with this beige tool, I went ahead and also made an overskirt out of the beige. So this goes on top of the structure tool skirt. And then also, of course, I made the upper skirt, which is this bling, blingy, bling bling skirt right here, which has the same fabric, obviously, as the bodice. And this goes on top here as well. So we have three layers just like this and those layers make up the skirt and my goal for today is to put all of these layers together in a waistband so I don't want to be putting on three layers of a skirt in the middle of town when I shoot this I just want to have the dress on and then put a skirt one 
thing on top that is easy to you know get in and get out of so my plan for today because i also tried out the dress yesterday and i think the best thing is to also add a waistline right here in the same bias tape actually this is that i used for the boning strips right here so i want to use this thicker waistband for this i have to kind of like do some magic i guess and make a hidden structured waistband something like that that is a bit thicker and sits here on the inside so yeah that's the plan i'm gonna make a waistband today and i have no idea how i mean i have an idea but it's just up here i've never done it before so let's go okay so i have as i said this bias tape right here which I will be using as the outer layer. So I'm gonna cut off the amount of my waist circumference plus the allowances, so 66 centimeters right here. And this is gonna fit around my waist perfectly. And then I am also going to be using some very stiff cotton. So I could either use my mock-up fabric, which is an off-white. It won't be seen, so it doesn't really matter. But I can also see this right here. This is denim in not that big of an off-white. And it also is thicker. Um, you can see it in the structure. And I'm going to cut off also 66 centimeters. But I'm going to make it five centimeters thick, so seven. And then I also have this offcut of my tool, which I also will be using as a stabilizer. So I'm going to encase this inside of my waistband generally so that I have a stiffer waistband. And I think I'm also gonna use interfacing to stabilize this finally, you know, as much stabilization as I can give it basically, because I just don't want it to break apart under the weight of the skirts. Let's try this. Actually to put interfacing on top of this so that this is fused between the interfacing and the denim. No idea if this works. Never tried it before, but let's try it. I'm not sure if this worked, honestly. It seems to like be somewhat fused, but I know that it's not at some parts. I'm just gonna let this cool because then it's gonna, you know, have its final form, I guess. And then I'm gonna continue working on it. I think I'm going to iron one centimeter up because I'm not sure how else I would be able to sew this on instead like other than top stitching and if i want to top stitch i need something to top stitch onto and that's gonna be this one centimeter seam allowance that i'm ironing up and you can see right here that it did not fuse well but that doesn't matter at least it's somewhat fused and also i will be stitching it together now anyways and this gets stitched on on top of here Am I supposed to do that right now? I don't think I am. I think this will be the last step. So what I'm actually gonna do right now is so... It's finishing this lower edge by overlocking. I'm gonna overlock. I didn't overlock, I just flipped the lower side up and top stitch because it won't be visible in the end. But I just need a neat edge on the lower edge here. And now I'm going to 
take all of my skirts, hopefully, and sandwich them up here underneath this flap that I just ironed down. And I'm going to pin this down, if I had pins here, I'm going to pin this down, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> So this is what it looks right now. I'm gonna zoom you out so you can like see what I'm doing. And this is layer one. So I'm going to grab layer two and I'm going to take my center front and just pin it in front of my center front of my tool. I'm just gonna do the standing up, honestly. Yeah, there you go. And last but not least, the final layer. Oh no. <laughs> See, and now you know why I need so much, so much structure underneath, because this is really, really heavy. Um, so if I don't have the tool that is standing upright, then this would just like all fall down. And now I guess I'm just gonna sew this onto the waistband, or at least try to sew this onto the waistband. Wish me luck. <laughs> So one thing I notice, of course, because this is a circle skirt, once you stretch here, this folds awkwardly up, which I don't want. So I think I'm just gonna like bar tack this onto the tool layer and not the outer layer. Just the stiff tool for it to, you know, have something to grab on. And that hopefully prevents this from folding up. So the next step, I think, before doing anything else, is sewing the zipper in. So I'm going to try to make all of these center back seams one. So I'm just gonna sew along into the seam allowance of all three of them and try to align them. And this, by the way, is not the usual way how you would make it. If you have three unders or two underskirts and one upper skirt, you would make three skirts. But as I said, I don't want to, I want, I don't want the hassle of that in public, especially when I'm like shooting this. So I want this to be as easy as possible. Therefore, I'm just going to treat this as one skirt, one layer. And that also means that I am going to put only one zipper in. So as I just mentioned, I am literally just stitching all three layers at the center back, which I left open for my zipper together so that it behaves as one layer of fabric. That's what I'm doing right here because the next step is going to be putting my zipper into the center back.
Once the zipper is sewn in, I went ahead and just ironed my center bag nice and flat. I really like to do this, especially with a hidden zipper, because you can just make sure that the zipper is really, really hidden. Usually if you use a hidden zipper foot, it already sews it in place so that it's completely hidden, but another final press just, you know, makes it really, really nicely. The next step is to just finish the waistband from the outer side. So I went ahead and folded the already ironed edge of my waistband. That's the first edge that we ironed down in the very beginning. I pinned it down onto the outer side of my skirts and I will be sewing the bias tape onto the fold at the same time. So I'm top stitching it in one go all the way around, like in a, in a rectangle more or less. And that's honestly already it. A few other things that I did was I actually did not touch my hem of my structural tool layer. I just left it as is. I only overlocked the hem of my nude tool layer and I went ahead and folded my sequence layer five millimeters up twice and top stitched it. So how I usually, you know, do a nice hem. And then also just for the skirt to sit where it's supposed to sit, you know, it has a lot of weight and therefore it tends to just fall a bit down on my waist. I also used some pants hooks on the center back, left and right of my zipper to hook into the lower back of my dress, so of my bodice. And to end this video, here's my cat because she's just too cute not to be shown. that's it already for today's video i hope you enjoyed even though this was not really a tutorial but more of a vlog kind of video which is also why i decided not to upload my pattern for this dress specifically just because you know if you really want to make this dress i don't really have video content of me actually sewing it so there is not really a step-by-step -step tutorial if you are really interested in this pattern please leave me a comment down below if there are you know a lot of you guys who are interested in it of course i'm going to upload it at some point but not today i actually uploaded another pattern though which is my prom dress polina which is one of my first videos my first pattern i think also that i uploaded on my etsy and you know you live and you learn and as it was one of my first patterns i really didn't know what I was doing so I took it offline I reworked it because it was one of the patterns with the most questions to it so I reworked it and remade the pattern and also you know wrote uh, sewing instructions and stuff like that so you can go ahead and check that out down in the description below and also in the pinned comment you're going to find a link directly to that listing and I'll handle it the same as I handled you know my puff dress um, update and stuff like that if you've already purchased the old version of my prom dress Polina of course you do not have to buy it again obviously just send me your order number and your email address at once you can message me on Etsy and I'll send out the updated version to you ASAP so leave me a comment down below if you'd like to have a pattern from this prom dress and I'll be sure to you know go ahead and work on it. Other than that, if you haven't already, please go and hit the subscribe button down below. Also ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that. And also if you're interested in um, similar content like this video, please go ahead and check out all of my other videos on my channel. I'm doing loads of videos on designing, sewing, and of course pattern making. So if you're interested in that, check out my channel. Also go ahead and follow my Insta if you haven't already. Um, I am sharing lots of behind the scenes, especially from my, you know, work on these videos and then of course also of my life. And on Fridays or Saturdays, it's shooting day, so I'll be posting lots of behind the scenes of the photo sessions that I have for my videos. Links are down in the description below. Everything has the same handle as here on YouTube, so go ahead and please give me a follow there. That's it already, so thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna show you the shots that we did in just a second, so thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!